Hey there, maniacs! Welcome to the first episode of Dirty Bike Talks with Vegas Romaniac. Now, this is a show about motorcycle and motorcycle repair. And I get hundreds of questions every day, and I'm going to try to answer them to you that way that we all learn. I might be crippled and I can't ride, but it doesn't mean that I'm dead. And because of that, I have information that I've accumulated for the past, I don't know, six years, seven years since I'm riding. And I want to put that information out for you so you can save a dollar into mechanic bills. Here's the first question. We got it from Robert W. Um, wouldn't putting oil on the air filter restrict airflow from going through it? Now this is a uh, question that I got on one of my videos when I was oiling and I was showing you how to oil your air filter. And the guy logically has a very very good point. Um, when you have the air filter for the dirt bike, uh, you have to clean it. Uh, because you were riding in the dirt uh, compared to driving in the city. There's a lot, a lot, a lot, like a thousand times more dust that gets raised by the motorcycle in front of you or just blown uh, over the road. And that dirt uh, will get into the motor, it will destroy your valve, it will destroy your rings, it will uh, dirty up your, your oil, uh, it will create all kinds of problems including maybe clog up your carburetor or your EFI system or other things like those. Maybe not the EFI system as much, but anyways, you catch my drift, right? So the dirt bikes, um, air filters have oil on it and can you run it without oil yes you can run it without oil uh, but it's a terrible idea and uh, that's why we oil them but will the oil restrict and this is how what Robert asked will the oil restrict the uh, passage of air through it now first of all you have to understand this when the carbureted bikes come out of the factory line they always come with the air filter oil so therefore the carburetor is tuned to the um, um, air to be restricted through the air filter so it doesn't really it's it expects resistance so let me put it that way it expects resistance is tuned that way if you run a motorcycle without the air filter with a dry air filter with a uh, oiled oil filter it will run differently every time and uh, because of that it's very very important first of all to oil your filter so you bring your bike back to uh, its lean or its rich um, um, setup that uh, it was specifically designed by the manufacturer um, also the um, oil in the filter will capture the dust it's a very very sticky oil specifically designed for air filters and therefore um, it will restrict the uh, the intake of the uh, uh, air uh, yes a little bit but it will stick to the dust so the dust has to go through the passages and through the foam of the air filter uh, and uh, the oil will uh, make it stick uh, if the fine particles are very very small uh, and you, uh, the air filter is not oiled it will go through and instead of bouncing against the walls of those little passages it will just fly right through the very small particles that cannot be caught by the by the foam it will go right through and go into your motor so the oil is very very important for the air filter to uh, uh, keep the dust away from the carburetor, keep the dust away from the um, motor. Now they, if they only invented a oiled air filter for your face to save you from the diseases that you're gonna have from breathing that air in, that is a uh, completely different story. So my final answer is that not only that you have to oil it, it's very very important, but also your bike will run better because it's specifically designed to breathe constricted like that. So very very important. Because this is also the first episode, you let me know which kind of an audio setup do you like best. Um, I have the audio setup that I'm using right now with the microphone on my clip. Also I have the audio setup set up on the camera over there that you are watching me from. Which one do you like better? I'm going to switch in between. So now we are on that camera. How do you like the noise? How do you like the sound? How do you like the ambient sound? And now we are back on this microphone. How do you like the noise? How do you like the sound? How do you like the ambient sound? Uh, this one is a deeper, more um, grunty voice. Uh, that one is more clear. It feels to me that it sounds better. So for those people who are watching it from a mobile phone, those people who are watching it from a tablet, those people who are watching it from a PC, those people who are watching it from a headphones, let me know which one you like best. Do you like this voice that I have right now? Or do you like that voice that you could see on that camera? Also, very, very, very important, don't judge this based on my stupid accent because people just hate my voice. And if that's the case, no camera will fix it. 
Going back to a third question, no, a second question on this uh, show. And by the way, for those people that have questions and you want to know how to do a certain thing and I could help you for free, why not? That's why I'm here, right? As I said in the beginning of the video, I might be crippled and I can't really ride, but it doesn't mean that I can answer a question and save you a dollar in mechanical bills. Uh, the other question that I have from somebody else, so let's pull up one over here. This is a little bit of a, a longer question. It's from a AAA Hills Handyman. So uh, the conversation uh, that I read the discussion, and I'm not gonna go through it because it's, it's, it's sometimes the questions are quite long and. I would recommend you to keep them a little bit shorter, but um, he has very, very good suggestions as far as like how to uh, uh, make this channel work um, you know um, wh what do I think about patreons why do I don't have a patreon why do I uh, um, uh, uh, make a lot of giveaways for my um, subscribers and stuff like that now uh, you have to you have to uh, uh, judge things only based on what you see on other channels and there's a lot of channels that have a lot of giveaways and other things like that um, those are all text schemes those are all uh, things that are very very hard to get away with and um, some channels uh, are willing to risk and they have very very good expensive accountants or they have very very good knowledge how to navigate the system around and how to um, uh, literally navigate the system around um, where you don't get caught or you don't get sued or you don't get in trouble um, just to give you an example I'm not gonna give any names but let's say that you give a lot of bikes as a giveaway like oh watch my videos and I'm gonna give you a bike as a giveaway uh, but you have to buy my shirt or you have to buy my cap or something like that now what you want to do is you want to sell enough caps to be able to cover the price of the bike plus whatever you're making out of videos plus the bike is a tax deduction so if you made let's say fifty thousand dollars on YouTube in one year then you could take thirteen thousand dollars for that motorcycle and then write it off as a loss as a giveaway and therefore you could uh, reduce the amount of taxable income uh, to uh, $35,000 or whatever um, here's the risk and this is the biggest problem that uh, people have um, you have um, a uh, the risk of uh, people misunderstanding you. you you cannot be a casino so you just cannot be a casino uh, you have to have a license so because of that you have to make it so it's not really a gamble so people don't really buy your t-shirts to uh, be a gamble people buy your t-shirts to be um, more like a fun way to uh, enter and then you have to have a way to have free entrances into the system like free entrances means that you could somehow send your application for free but you prefer if you buy my t-shirt and that's what makes it because if it's free then everybody can participate then it's not a gamble and therefore theoretically you're not really a casino you don't have to have a gambling license um, navigating that particular system it's it's quite bad and it's quite tricky and I really, really don't care very much about doing that so um, at this point uh, I'm trying to keep it simple I'm trying to reduce my costs I'm trying to reduce the risk that I'm exposing myself to um, and because of that I just don't want to fall into that um, uh, niche if, if, I, if I could say that so for those people that ask me those questions uh, why do I do that I don't do that um, it's very very simple it's extremely complicated it feels like I'm taking advantage of people I've seen many people wearing uh, other people's t-shirts and uh, caps when I go riding and these are sometimes the people that really cannot afford a $25 to buy a cap or a t-shirt so uh, they're giving their hard-earned money to to people that already have so much and call me a socialist but I really believe that everybody should uh, uh, nobody should take advantage of somebody else and that seems to be the capitalistic way which it's very very hard for me to embrace it's hard for me to take advantage I'll, I'll be a horrible business person because I put too much soul into what I do that's me and I'm sorry about that but that was a good question um, will I do it maybe I'll open a patreon uh, at one point uh, in the future but just for significant uh, dollar amounts like a dollar or two or something like that so you could push your question ahead of everybody else you know the same way is that like uh, six flags or seven flags do for those people that uh, versus sit in line versus the people that bought a fast pass it's kind of like a slap in the face for people that sit in a line to be very honest with you but that's America you could buy yourself ahead uh, it is what it is um, 
Now I'm going to do something that some of you might um, not know before I'm going to answer the third question for the show. And here it is. I'm going to take attention away from there and I'm going to say this. Hey Google, set up my temperature on my thermostat for 65. Sorry, something went wrong and I'm unable to control your home device. This is why I quit my job. This is why I quit the job that I had before, which was like Geek Squad and doing home automation and stuff like that. This shit, even though it's my house, never works. But then if I go on my phone and I push the button, the system works just fine. So somehow the link is broken and my job was to fix uh, this kind of things uh, before and I absolutely hated it. So that's why I'm doing YouTube and I really appreciate your support guys because I feel like I could talk to you and we could do these things together um, and I could still bring a small income without breaking my back which I already tried and to be very honest with you that's why I say in the beginning of the video I might be crippled but I'm not dead because yeah, I'm a little bit crippled. I can't really, really work. I'm very limited of the things that I could do. So without you guys, this show wouldn't exist. Without the, this show, I couldn't live. So going to the third question. Uh, a very, very long one from uh, Level 3 RC. Thank you very much for your efforts that I'm making in these videos. And I really, really appreciate that. You are a very, very kind person like many others. Um, but he has a legit question. Uh, if I push the start button and kick over, uh, it will work. The bike starts very easily. Uh, I hate that and I want to fix it. Is there a really good video on this? So the, the, the question is maybe hand uh, typed on the cell phone waiting for doctor appointment or whatever. Let me explain to you what I understand that happens on this bike. Um, the, the starter motor has a Bentex. This one, it's a special thing built into the side of the motor that it connects and disconnects from the flywheel or yeah flywheel let's say flywheel just to simplify things for, for everybody so the motor has a crank at the bottom and it has a big a wheel with teeth in it um, that wheel is specifically designed um, to spin the motor with a starter motor so there's a disconnect and quick connect in between and this one is usually electromagnetic so there's a, a magnet that pushes the the bentix in there goes into the uh, the wheel starts your motorcycle and then it disconnects and it the spring pushes it out so your bike doesn't spin the electric motor one while, while it's running what's reaching the, the rpm that will destroy the electric motor in like 30 30 30 seconds so uh in this case, what happens is that he pushes the start button and nothing happens, but when he kicks the bike, it happens. So what I, what I believe uh, in this particular case, and I would like to get an answer back, not only from you guys, uh, if you believe the same thing that I, I do, but also uh, from the guy that actually uh, brought me the message. What I believe it happens is that the electromagnetic, uh, uh, the, the electromagnet that was supposed to connect the motor into the, push that little gear uh, into the uh, crank, um, gear that it's either weak it's either a really really weak battery uh, it's either jammed like it's not oiled properly and it's rusty or something like that maybe maybe um, oil um, water got in there um, some motorcycles the that part of the system is just greased some motorcycles actually there's a oil going in there from the gearbox depends on the model so it's something in those terms and it's actually very very easy to diagnose because most of the motorcycles you just take a little cover for it it's just like a little add-on cover sometimes you don't even have to take the entire side cover or at least on Yamaha you could take the cover off so what I think is that a gear is not connecting and uh, it seems that once he kicks it then the bike starts and the motor uh, actuates because something is get gets jammed over there so what I if that would be my bike what I would do is I would take it apart um, and uh, see if it's an oil system uh, then uh, most likely the electromagnet or, or, or something like that M maybe even even if I'll try to do that maybe um, I will actually uh, uh, hook it up to a car battery so hook the bike to a car battery just give it more juice uh, and see if the juice helps because the juice helps it's as simple as uh, you just need a new battery um, that's the easiest way to test 
but if it doesn't then that would be another option just take the, the cover off and see what happens you can actually uh, click it uh, push the start button and see what's gonna happen when you do that, that does the mechanism move now in some cases the mechanism doesn't move because when you take the cover the cover holds the spring and everything together so I understand that um, but those are the things that that could cause this problem uh, on some motorcycles actually they're not electromagnetic uh, they're mechanical so there's like a mechanical wheel that when when the electric motor starts to spin the teeth catch onto that little gear and it pushes it in and then uh, once the the gear starts to spin with the motor then those the exact same teeth um, push the gear out so the gear never really stays connected all the time um, it could be that the channel where the, the teeth are going in, into each other that channel is worn out or something like that it could be like a, a, a easy thing to just replace that gear so uh, remember before you take it to the mechanic and let them deal with all this stuff this is the things they're gonna try um, you can give it a try yourself sometimes you're just a couple of tools away to, to make it work um, it might be worth it for you it might be worth it for you because not only you're gonna learn but next time you're gonna know what you're doing and once you get in the motor deep enough it becomes repetitive so oh I've seen that and it just becomes easier and easier and easier for you to, to get deeper and deeper and deeper and save yourself thousands and thousands of dollars on, on uh, motorcycle uh, repair so um, I hope I answered those questions uh, the, the right way for you guys. I'm trying to keep these videos as short as possible. Remember, this is the first one. I'm going to create a series um, as far as this goes. Uh, because I'm, I can't really, really ride, um, I count on you to send me these questions in. So the easiest way to send them in is either VegasRomaniac uh, at gmail.com. So it's VegasRomaniac at gmail.com. Um, or write them at the bottom of the videos. Uh, as you can see, I take screenshots out of the... Um, uh, videos and um, I put uh, these things uh, out there uh, for you guys. So thank you very much for watching. Uh, let me know what you think about this format, um, about making it this way. As I said, I'm limited of the things that I could do and because of that I have knowledge in this head that I've accumulated for years and years and years and this knowledge can help you guys while I'm helping myself. I'm giving this information for you guys for free. I don't have a Patreon, you don't have to pay for it. All you have to do is just watch my video and click like, click subscribe and share that information with everybody else. I will try to stay at it and make a couple of series uh, of this particular type of a format before I'm gonna give up on it. Also, if this video catches on and you guys like it, I'm going to maybe invest a little bit more into an actual studio with better microphones and better lighting and stuff like that. But in the meanwhile, remember, content is king. What I gave you as far as the information is king, but I cannot make it work without you. I need the information, the feedback, uh, as far as like this microphone or that microphone. Little things like those that can make a huge difference as far as um, how I'm going to um, develop this particular studio and how much money I'm gonna spend into it. And if this actually format is interesting for you guys and uh, you wanna watch this kind of videos. Thanks for watching and uh, let me know what you know uh, and let me know what you think at the bottom of the video uh, Vegas Romaniac out thank you very much for listening or watching on YouTube remember this is gonna be also a podcast